a hundred and I left 30 with the group to give out as well. So I did about a hundred. I talked, talked to each and every person I gave it to. And, uh, the way we really opened up is we got out in front of the Alamo and the, the police were constantly making people move and they're saying, Oh, we got to do another bomb sweep. Everybody's got to get out of here. All right. We're going to do another bomb sweep. So blah, blah, blah. Again, bomb sweeps like, Oh my God, the citizens are here saying they want lower taxes. There may be bombs. Well, Glenn Beck is coming. Lord Beck was on his way. There can be, you know, no chance of any kind of dissent to Lord Beck. And I mean, there were people there. But I mean, do you see how? Yes. I want freedom. Oh, God, let's look for bombs. It's like it's dirty. It's bad. It's, oh, my God. You know, we've got to have white gloves on. It's like pornography. Put it in a black bag. They're talking about freedom from our founding fathers. <laughs> so uh, when we come back, when you would give them the FEMA camp documents, we'll talk about what the neo is. Okay, Burmas, give them the number for folks to call in on. Yes, the call-in line is 866-582-9933. That is 866-582-9933. Open phones. Hopefully you're going to talk about some real issues, because when I try to talk about real issues with people today uh, down at this tax party event, uh, I, it got a little rough, Alex. I'm not going to lie. Okay, well, we're going to bring Rob Dew in here in just a minute. In fact, Rob, start wheeling it. Get Rob and get him to wheel a chair in here so we can talk to him and share a mic with him for a moment. And we'll mm -hmm. go to some calls and cover a host of other news. Again, it's Alex Jones hijacking the uh, Info Warriors show here. Uh, I am unseating the original Info Warrior, Jason Burma. Oh, I'm the original. I think you're the original. No, 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 no. He actually invited me in tonight uh, because there's a lot to talk about. So I'm here in the catbird seat. We're covering the news. Uh, just got raped by the private bankers, most people out there, or you've been being raped all year with withholding uh, your money going to these people. And it's a real tra uh, travesty of justice because they sell the public. When I had Tom Hartman on today, we were simulcasting. He you kept know, saying, well, this is the infrastructure of the country. And callers called in and said, it's like the rent on the infrastructure. No, 30 to 1, the money goes to offshore banks that want our guns, that lobby to destroy our freedoms. And you're there at the meeting, in fact, let's get a wide shot on both these guys. You're there uh, at the meeting, and uh, you said there was about two, 3,000 people there. Again, Burma, start over. Describe what was there. Describe what they did. When you tried to give them civilian inmate labor camp programs from Army.mil, admitting the FEMA camps. All right, well, let's just start with the first guy that we saw. Uh, we get in front of the Alamo. We just shoot a setup shot. Right now, the police are, again, trying to move people away, saying they want to do a bomb sweep. Uh, right away, a gentleman recognized Rob Jacobson and said, hey, you work for Alex Jones, don't you? And Rob's Rob like, eh. <laughs> so anyway, they got to talking for a moment, and I thought to myself, well, there's this yuppie standing right next to this guy. This yeah. guy looks perfect. I mean, this is like, had a nice camera. Yeah, had, yeah, had a nice yeah. camera there, sun shining, looked like he tanned, had a good job, you know, typical yuppie. I, I could just t tell he was going to be a good interview. Okay, enough about him. <laughs> All right, so you, I start talking to him. You're about him. We well, <laughs> well, because he's the, my first pick, Jones. I'm like, I, I want to talk to this guy. Let's see how far I can take it with this guy. So I He asked, went for a home run the first time. I, I always go for a home run. I'm swinging for the fences every time. Anyway, so oh, I, I go up it to... It really has double meanings, but just go ahead. <laughs> so well, when I, you start talking about Glenn Beck, this stuff comes up. Yeah. And it is a teabagging event, but go ahead. <laughs> anyway, so right off the bat, I ask him why he's here. That's my opening question. Why are you here in the first place? And he's like, well, I'm really not happy with the the way the administration's bringing in more taxes. And he started saying, I don't. I think we're headed towards socialism. And I, I thought that was great. You know, he was very upset about the banking institutions. And that we could agree on. Uh, we were we were even talking a little bit of quantitative easing. We talked a little bit about the G20. He was hip to that stuff. That's the new global currency. Yes, the new. And, and you know, people saying it's not a global currency. Again, I want to point them to this Geithner. They're host. already issuing it since last it's, December. It, they say it's an IMF That's reserve Reuters. unit. That's Reuters. Yeah, it's right it. here. This is Reuters. Gettner to host G7, G20 meetings April 24th because because they, they're having more of these. This is being set up. And it says uh, the deal included a huge infusion of funds, one point two trillion, to give it resources to lend to emerging market countries. That means take them over under strain, as well as a new infusion of IMF reserve units known as special drawing rights. And those are the new global currency. Exactly. So when you Google special drawing rights, it's like it's not global government; it's global governance, and it's uh, global governance. It's it's uh, not uh, global currency; it's quantitative easing. Exactly. It's not global currency. It's just a IMF reserve unit. <laughs> you know, it's it's semantic. Well, no, games. I mean, I mean, they admit if you Google quantitative easing and 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 IMF World Bank uh, reserve unit, 
you will see their other articles where they're saying this is the new global currency. Yeah, global super currency that was asked for. But then for. a congresswoman says we should pass a law that we're not going to be part of that. And she's kooky. And, and uh, Rachel Maddow says it doesn't exist. This woman's insane. Yeah. Because she watches the G20 on the news. And reads the... See, see I, mean, I mean, that's such an insulting mind game that they play with us. Just like, hey, I, I read Newsweek where they said we're going to have a new global currency uh, uh, and, and that we'll have a bank of the world I pay taxes to. I don't want that. And they say, shut up, doesn't exist. You go, but they're setting it up right now. No, they don't. Are you a terrorist? Because all these federal documents say you're a terrorist. And we need to have a bomb sweep. She's talking about we don't want a global currency uh, and a global government. Well, wait, I have USA Today, third article this year, saying that the Supreme Court's following the orders of the uh, international uh, a, you know, tribunal in, in The Hague, uh, we don't want this. And they go, oh, bomb sweet, bomb sweet. <laughs> I mean, literally, it's like, oh, you just defecated on the ground here if you talk about any of this. And, oh, you're a white supremacist. You know, I don't want corrupt government. Oh, you're a white supremacist. Why are you bringing Jews into this? And you're like, no, I, that's actually racist. You're bringing up Jews. I, I was talking about the world bankers. Oh, like... Like the Jewish Madoff, you, you're an anti-Semite. <laughs> I was listening to BBC this morning, and they were saying that. Isn't all this attack on Madoff really code for attacking Jews? They're introducing it because they want to make it all about that instead of about corruption. But but It's not about the money. <laughs> exactly. Look, look, look. I'm running on here. Tell us what happened. Go ahead. All right. So I finish off on that, and I say to him, hey, so did you see his recent, quote-unquote, debunking of these FEMA camps? You know, after I talked to him a little bit about the Mayak report, he acknowledged, report. he acknowledged the Mayak report. And I'll tell you, everybody I talked to who knew about the Mayak report and wasn't involved with We Are Change had never read it. They never even looked at it. They all parrot what they hear on the mainstream media. None of, none of the people had actually taken the time to look at this document. So I handed them the document and I said, you know, you need to look at this. Gave him a copy of uh, Loose Change Final Cut. And I said, you know, one of the things he just debunked with the uh, editor of quote unquote popular mechanics, you know, this yellow journalist publication, I didn't say that to him, but was these FEMA camps, and I said, well, what did he debunk? I mean, do you remember? He's like, well, I don't really remember, but it's all kooky to me, and I'm like, well, you think that's because he put a guy uh, with the edge of insanity graphic up there, and he's bleeding out of his eyeballs, steam and, out. you know, steam coming out of his ears, and he's like, well, I, I just think that's a little far off. So I grabbed the Civilian Inmate Labor Program document. This is from the Army. You can go there Yes, right that's why I say. I say, look, this is off the dot .mil page. This is a military document. It's been declassified since 2005. This... That's the uh, latest version. Yeah, it's been this, declassified since 97. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. This uh, one program has been around, at least till we know, since 97. Rex 84 was before it. Hand on the document. Oh, I, I don't even want to look at it. I mean, people yeah. literally did, like, wanted to not touch it. So I, I made him take it, and I talked to him about it for a little while. He was a pretty decent sport about it. But still, you know, like, you know, like yuppies do, just <laughs> whatever. He said, I don't want to go there. <laughs> and it's just like, I just can't. <laughs> I don't want to worry about that. I don't want to worry. Oh, that's okay. Other people... I had literally had them take a copy of Loose Change. They were ready to look at that. And I gave them a copy of the Civilian Inmate Labor. Then they put the copy of Loose Change right back in. Uh, that was the good old boy. Yeah, that was a good old boy. I guess I had less success with people in actual cowboy hats than I did with people without the cowboy hats. But it was great. I mean, you know. Well, those guys on with cowboy hats are afraid of horses and cattle. I mean, I'm serious. The ones that have lariats in their car usually and walk around going, hoo, like they're Clint Eastwood. Uh... I mean, you have to learn. Those guys are in a delusional la la land. Well, most people I talked to were actually bigger than me. You know, it's not like anyone's going to intimidate me with their looks. I mean, that's not the point of this. I mean, I'm wearing no, but I mean, they just strut around all day worshiping government, and 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 now it's politically correct for them to not like Obama. And Fox News is pretty good now. I'm glad Obama's in. I get to bitch and grip and feel like I'm a conservative, and so that's what they're doing. I mean, that's why. Uh, you just got to move on. It, 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 look, if they don't want it or don't want to see it, move on. Pearls before swine. Yeah, well, a lot of people were coming up going, what do you got there? What do you, you tell them what it is? Oh, and I heard a couple people say, oh, I saw that last night. It's awesome. Uh, this old lady. Oh, and yeah, she Obama was like a grandma, Perfect grandma, probably from Florida. Goes, oh, I saw that last night. It, it's great. You know, she said it just like that. I, I was just like, oh, wow, what? it's really good. About the Obama deception. deception. And then, you know, I walked right yeah. up to her. I said, ma'am, here's a copy of Loose Change yeah. Final Cut. I hope that you take a look at this information as well. And thank you very much, sir. And, you know, that's how you keep you very cordial. You try to yeah. bring up information that sparks their interest. So they will take that DVD home 
I mean, I had little kids walking up to me. I had eight or nine year olds, and I saw people with their kids. You know, one guy had his kid with a little, you know, U.S. Army hat on, and he was just interested in what yeah. we were doing. He came over, he took a copy of the DVD, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, if he watches this DVD, maybe I can make a difference in this family's life, and he won't. You know, have his boy go off to a desert and die somewhere for some rich billionaire's cause. Exactly, and you said you also uh, ran into a guy who was doing security there in an Infowars dot com tyranny response. Yeah, team the shirt. tyranny response yeah. team shirt on. He had a big old yellow flag. He's a big dude. I think it was kind of volunteer security. I think he was just there. On, All I know is he wasn't really talking to. Well, anybody he just said it was security. That's yeah, why he I said, said that. Security. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, he came up to you know he came up to me and he shook my hand really yeah. quick and I said, hey man, can we get you on film really quick? And he said, sure. And uh, he had done two tours in Afghanistan, one in Iraq, and uh, you know he, I think he said he was a police officer. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know he basically said what we're doing is great, and we're trying to wake people up. He talked about the Mayak report with him, and uh, it was a good interview. I mean, there were some pretty aware people out there, but the the older crowd was definitely in effect, and there were a lot of Glenn. Well, Beck that's because members. Beck's been announcing for weeks he would be there, so this really was a Beckian event. Yeah. But what percentage would you say were actually real patriots that know the the inside?